Hello everybody! Welcome to Pick a Stack Wednesday! Today we have a singing bowl and a singing bell. So we're going after your heart and your throat chakras. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. So they charge up the crystals, they charge up the cards, they charge up everybody that can hear them. And um, what a beautiful sound for this time of the year. It is the Wednesday before Christmas. Um, we just had the winter solstice yesterday. Today is 12, 22, 21. One, two, 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 one. Amazing. I don't know about you, but I've had an amazing day today. If you are new to pick a stack, this is what we do here. We've got three boxes, one, two, three, hiding three stacks. And each stack consists of two tarot cards from two different decks, one oracle card, and a crystal. And each stack tells a story. And they're hidden underneath boxes, so it encourages you to use your intuition. So your mission is to Think of an idea, an issue, or a question. It can pertain to you, your loved ones, your family, your community, the world, anything you want. And then choose either stack one, stack two, or stack three. And um, you can choose two stacks or three stacks. There's no rules here. You make the rules. And we don't judge anybody for anything. So um, let's get started. Oh, by the way, the background. Amethyst, 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 fluorite, a whole bunch of clear quartz points, and two fabulous winter dragons that I just finished last night. They wanted to be in the video. <laughs> All right, so you've thought of your idea, your issue, or your question. Let's get started. Stack number one. If you chose stack number one, your stone is angel light. Angel light. Angel light is a pale blue. And it is a perfect stone to use to contact and communicate with the angels, of course, and other spiritually aligned beings to receive information for yourself and others. And that's what we're doing when we're meditating, is we're talking to our higher selves, um, angels that work with the light, ascended masters, spirit guides that live in the light, um, basically beings of the light. So this is a really good stone to work with. Um, it's also good for dream work. Um, it works with the third eye chakra and the crown chakra. And it is an excellent choice to help smooth out your emotional body. So if you're having kind of a roller coaster ride, which a lot of people are these days, this is a really good stone. It's very soothing in the hand. Um, it helps balance, polarize, and align the physical body with the aura. It can also help with self-expression, communication, allowing us to speak our minds and becoming more assertive. So this works really well with the crown, excuse me, with the throat chakra. Okay. So let's see what your first card is. It is from the Tarot of Dreams deck and you get the Justice card. This is card number 11. 11 is one of my favorite numbers. So there's something going on in your life or there's going to be something going on in your life where you really want justice, but you have to remember that we want justice for all. Okay. So if you are um, in a court case, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're in some kind of a court case, don't just wish good for yourself. We want to wish good for all, for everybody, because that brings us the best karma. So if somebody out there is going through a divorce, you want to wish good for everybody involved. This means um, your ex-spouse, your children, other children that are involved, other, all the families that are involved, you want good for all. So let's see what card we're going to add to that. We're going to add a card from the Spirit Song Tarot. And it's the Page of Crystals. The Page of Crystals is represented by this beautiful fox. 
And um, the page is always a messenger. So it could be that there's going to be a messenger coming in for this legal case that you're going through. Um, this is very grounding. Crystals are earth in this deck. So this is really the page of earth. It's a slow moving page. It's a slow moving message. Like maybe you don't have it yet, but it is coming in. Um, I kind of feel like this is the card of patience for you to go with this. So, um, you know, we've all been conditioned to get the drive through version of everything. And this is kind of a reminder to somebody out there that, you know what, we got to have patience. Um, because first we set the intention, then we set our attention to the desired result that this is for everybody's highest and greatest good. And then we just be patient. Um, and when we're impatient, it actually can bring about negative outcomes because I want it and I want it now. Well, if you want, if you get it now, it's not going to be the way it needs to be. It's like, it's, it's like you're going to get unripe fruit. Okay. So this is a reminder that whatever legal issue you have, contract, um, something starting up, something ending, um, please have patience and put the intention out there that this is for everybody's highest and greatest good, whatever the result is. Okay. We want everybody to not necessarily to win, but to have the highest and greatest good for all. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to add a card from the keepers of the light deck and we get holy amethyst. This is divine alchemy. It says move beyond the current challenges and focus on what you desire. That goes right along with what I was just saying. Let's see, can we put this up somewhere? I do have a candle burning in that fluorite, so I don't want my card in front of that. And let's see, they don't have numbers. So I'm going to assume they're in alphabetical order, and they are. <clears throat> it's on page number 46. 4 plus 6 is 10, and 1 plus 0 is 1. So this brings in um, new beginnings. So Holy Amethyst is the twin flame of Archangel Zadkiel, the angel who helps us transmute negative experiences into love and learning. He is the keeper of the violet flame which helps us release anything that is no longer serving us. Holy Amethyst also enables us to look over our past fears and challenges and draw wisdom and learning from them. Unlike Zadkiel, for many years she was not mentioned in spiritual texts, and I believe this was because her miraculous support wasn't needed on earth as it is now. To connect deeply with her light, Hold an amethyst. Now, I just have to laugh because I didn't pick that card first. I put the amethyst out first. So that's really cool. Plus, I don't know what the cards are when I'm, when I'm turning them over. Um, then it also says, You are ready to move beyond energies or situations that are no longer helpful to you and make space in your life for something more purposeful. You may feel a real need for clearing out, not just mentally or emotionally, but physically too. It's so funny because this weekend I am like so motivated to clean out my basement. Um, there is a sense that you are moving beyond challenges and forging golden opportunities from stagnant or unhappy experiences. It's important to recognize that you are like a magician at this time with the ability to use your thoughts, will, and actions to bring about life-fulfilling and dream-enhancing opportunities. It's important to focus on what you desire and not what you fear, because what you give your energy to will literally begin to flourish. That is so true. What you focus your energy on, that's what's going to happen. 
So many times people are afraid they're never going to have enough money or they're going to get in an accident, their car's going to fall apart or whatever. And then it actually happens and they go, well, see, I told you, well, that that's because you manifested it. We don't want to do that. So whatever's going on here, remember, put the intention out there, intention that it is resolved for everybody's highest and greatest good. Put your attention to that. And then be patient. Be patient. And remember, you're a magician. What you put your energy to, that's what you're going to create. So that is stack number one. If you chose stack number two, your stone is snowflake obsidian. Let's see. There's a little snowflake right there. So it's obsidian with these little snowflake looking kind of grayish white spots. Like Holstein for all of those people out there that like cows. Obsidian is a very protective stone and is excellent for removing negativity. It is excellent protection against psychic attacks and can, can provide balance during times of change and stress. Probably not a lot of change and stress this weekend, you know, with all the family and, and friends and Christmas and all that. Just kidding. Um, it can aid in seeing patterns in life and recreating them in a more beneficial way. It is a stone of serenity and purity. It is associated with the root chakra and is also beneficial for the veins, your skeleton, and smooth skin. So, carrying one of those on your person is really good for any bone issues, any vein issues, any skin issues. Nice. We're going to start off with a card from the Tarot of Dreams deck. We get the King of Wands, also known as the King of Fire. This is an imposing figure. Uh, this is somebody who gets things done. You know, like he's the he's the manager. He's the construction manager for building a house. He's the one who oversees people. He gets things done. <laughs> Take no prisoners. He's going to get stuff done. He's got some little dragons here. Fire is passion. This is the Get Her Done card. And we're going to add from the Spirit Song deck. Holy cow. So we got two kings here. King of Feathers is known as the, also known as the King of Air. So we got the King of Fire and the King of Air. And guess what happens when you put fire and air together? Look out. King of Air is all about changes. And it actually shows um, this little stream here, this little meandering stream. Um changes going with the flow um but whatever whatever your question idea or issue is this is this is a very very powerful answer right so we're going to be grounded with the obsidian or this has to do with our root chakra maybe and then we've got king of feathers king of wands or king of air king of fire we're going to get stuff done or stuff is coming really, really, really fast. Okay? Uh, the the Spirit Song Tarot deck always amuses me because, like, this is, a, this is the King of Air card, and it's represented by a lion. And you don't think of lions when you think of air. I mean, I would think this would be like a pterodactyl, right? Some big flying creature or a Boeing 747. Um, but in this deck, it's a lion. And that lion... Um, he is, he appears to be the top of the heap. We all know it's the female lion that, that, um, takes care of everything and he's a figurehead. Yeah, it's true. Go look it up. Um, but this is a very, very strong answer to your question that big things are coming and they might come pretty darn fast or be, or appear to be really big and you might go, Oh, man, I can't handle that. But yes, you can. 
because everything in your life has led up to this and you've already built the foundation for whatever's coming. But this talks about a big change coming and it's something that you're going to be passionate about. You're going to love whatever this is. And look at the rays coming out of the lion's head. That's the Christ consciousness right there. I mean, this can talk about ascension. It can talk about 5D. It's a general reading, so you know I can't be too specific. But you got gold stuff coming out of this dude's head and gold stuff coming out of the lion's head. Hello? Big stuff, fast, higher frequency. So keep your frequency up. And do not succumb to the darkness because, holy crap, big things are coming for you. So then we're going to add a card from the, the Keepers of the Light deck. Oh, I love this. So this is Kathumi, and it says Cloak of Wisdom. Whoops, there we go. You already know the answer you seek. To go with those other two cards, big things are coming. Here it's saying you already know the answers, which is totally true. We do know the answers to every question that we seek. We do. It's just a lot of times we're like, well, yeah, but I don't trust myself. Or, you know, I got all these signs and I don't really know if they're for me. And, and so we need to stop second guessing ourselves, because um, that doesn't do anybody any good. But now we're going to see what Katumi has to say. Um, he is an ascended master who appears with a golden aura. Isn't that interesting? We've got golden auras on both of these cards and one on him. His teachings were brought to the world by Madame Blavatsky in the 19th century. There are many different theories as to his true identity. Many believe he was a wandering man known as Arishi in India dedicated to walking the path of spirit with very few material possessions. You know, and we're all in this mode of kind of cleaning out, so that's really interesting too. Others believe him to have been a well-educated Sikh uh, spiritual leader who was given a pseudonym to protect his true identity. I believe that he lived a, li a high life, but through spiritual practice was able to let go of his need for material possessions. Now he helps light workers go beyond the limits set by others and cultivate a personal connection to God. Knowledge is learned. Wisdom is remembered. You are in a real cloak of wisdom right now. Like Katumi, you have been on a wandering path trying to find answers through study and the insights of others. But now you are uncovering the truth of your own soul. Your soul is leading the way and you are being encouraged to follow. The fog is clearing. The light has come and it's shining on you. Your soul is saying, yes, follow it and trust the endless wisdom within you. Yes, yes, yes. If you chose stack number two, this is absolutely glorious. Look at all the golden auras. The golden rays coming out. Unbelievable. Beautiful. Katsumi also has an Ankh and a Metatron's cube and um, the Ouroboros, the snake that eats its own tail, which is, you know, it can be a symbol of infinity. Other things too. So this is super, super powerful. You got big things coming. Do not second guess yourself. No, no, no. This stack here is saying you got this. And whatever's coming is way, way, way better than anything you could have ever imagined. Do you got it? Your job is just to go into receiving mode. Yes, I deserve all the good things that are coming to me. Just tell yourself that over and over and over until you believe it. That was stack number two. Pretty powerful. Now we're going to stack number three. If you chose stack number three, your stone is Dalmatian Jasper. 
Dalmatian Jasper, it can be different colors. Sometimes it's dyed, but it has all these little spots, just like a Dalmatian dog. Yeah, that's better. And um, just like all the other Jaspers, it has the ability to enhance emotional balance. It can be nurturing and protective. Um, it's a happy stone and good for lifting spirits and relationships in general, and particularly good for long-term relationships. It can also help you to relax, see your own strengths and weaknesses, and to dispel feelings of disillusionment. It can also bring a sense of fun to your life. And other things it can do is um, it can help protect against nightmares, depression, negative thinking, and aiding memory. So like who doesn't need this these days? Um, one of the things though that we were just talking about in stack two is, you know, there's wisdom. Wisdom is remembered. We, we have to remember that we are tied to the Akashic records or the Akashic field. And so once you realize that you have that connection, you don't have to remember anything. You can just ask your guides for it. Hey, go in the Akashic records. To me, the Akashic records, it looks like a giant old library with lots of wood. And it smells like old leather books and, and wood and paper and oh, it's just like my happy place. Um, and every piece of information you could possibly want is there. So just ask your guides for it and have them go get it for you. So that is your stone. And the first card is going to be dun, 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 from the Tarot of Dreams deck. Oh, look at this, Nine of Cups. This, in this deck, this is like the party card. The Nine of Cups, I mean, the dude's obviously making wine or drinking wine. There's lots of grapes, there's lots of cups. He looks pretty happy, like he's had a little bit. I think there's even a little bit spilled on his chin. Um, <laughs> so this is a happy card. The Ten of Cups, you know, is, is like the happily ever after card. This is like, you're just about there, but you're partying like it's already happened which is what we're supposed to do anyway. We are supposed to party like we already have what we want, okay? You start acting like you have more money than you know what to do with, and all of a sudden the universe brings you more money than you know what to do with. Yay. So we're going to add to that a card from the Spirit Song deck. <clears throat> and you get a major arcana card, card number 20. And in this deck, card number 20 is Awakening. Now what's interesting is this goes to number 21 for the Major Arcana. So this is the card before the last card. This is the card before the last card, Ten of Cups. So to me, I feel like, ooh, it's whatever it is you're asking for, it is right around the corner. It is literally right around the corner. And we're almost there. And it's time to party. It's time to party. And this card here, from the Spirit Song deck is represented by the beautiful peacock. And what I got was put on your best dress or your best suit and start to dance because the party's here because whatever it is you wish for, here it comes. I mean, it's literally like days away. So if you chose stack number three, whatever your idea, issue, or question was, the answer is, oh yeah, baby. And um, not just yeah, but like all capitals, you know, italics, bold, big font, neon. Yeah, it's coming and you are going to celebrate and you should start celebrating now. So we're going to add to that a card from the Keepers of the Light. And this is someone very serious. This is Lord Melchizedek. And he is all about higher learning. And it says, you have learned from experience. More inner study is now required to further progress. So kind of like, you know, you're graduating. Here's your graduation party right here. You're graduating and now you're going to go on to the next thing. Like, okay, you've leveled up 
and we're going to graduate, but then we're going to learn some more stuff. But you couldn't learn that until you sort of graduated where you just were. Let's see what the book says. Put that right there. My poor dragon. He's like, hey, why are you putting that in front of my face? There you go. So Melchizedek is a high priest who is mentioned in the Bible's book of Genesis and many other sources too. He is here to assist the earth through the ascension process. Interesting because here's ascension right here and the party that goes with it. Um, the ascension process is basically moving everyone and everything back to a state of love and harmony. He appears with bright light around him and a long white beard to match his ancient high priest ways and is said to have his own order of light-filled priests who are able to help spiritual people develop their gifts and qualities. As he works on a high energetic level, we can connect with him through sacred geometry and by focusing on ancient star-shaped symbols. Um, one of the things, too, is um, this right here that he's got on his chest. It's two squares forming an eight-sided star. That is the star of Melchizedek. You, so sometimes we see stuff like that and we're like, wow, I wonder what that is. Yeah, that's where it came from. You have learned so much to this point and are learning more every day. You are recognizing all the great lessons your experiences and challenges have brought to you and are preparing for a transition or inner ascension where you will move beyond another level of fear and into the inner sanctum of your heart and soul. Become aware of patterns. Ancient symbols and signs are being sent to you from the universe. There's a sense that you are now able to focus in a new way and offer greater light to the world. Malchizedek and his order are with you now, leading you towards spiritual wisdom. Awesome. So, <laughs> Party on, dudes. That's what stack three is. Party on. And time to go back to school. It doesn't necessarily mean back to school school. It could be just um, you reading a book. It could be you meditating. I learn much more by meditating than I ever do by reading somebody else's um, works. So that is stack number three. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. I love you guys. You're the reason I do this. And I send you blessings of love, light, peace, joy, happiness, success, divine health, and all good things because you are worthy and you deserve them. And then also, happy holidays, whatever that means to you, whether it's Kwanzaa or um, Christmas or Yule or Hanukkah or Something that you made up, because I know a lot of people are doing that. Happy whatever. Okay? As long as we're not harming anybody else and we're spreading love all over this planet, that's what we need to be doing. And ye harm none. Blessings. I love you. You will see me again next week. Mwah. Namaste.